The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling within us. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to our Mass this morning, which we offer for the intentions of the Lama family. On this, the feast day of St. Philip Neri, the 16th century priest who founded the congregation of the Oratory, or the Oratorians, as we know them more commonly. And here in England, perhaps the most famous member, or the most famous member of the Oratory was our own Saint John Henry Newman. So today we call on the prayers of Saint Philip as we give thanks to God for his life and example. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who never ceased to bestow the glory of holiness on the faithful servants you raise up for yourself, graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us that fire with which you wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Neri. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Miletus, Paul sent for the elders of the church of Ephesus. When they arrived, he addressed these words to them. You know what my way of life has been ever since the first day I set foot among you in Asia, how I have served the Lord in all humility, with all the sorrows and trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I have not hesitated to do anything that would be helpful to you. I have preached to you and instructed you both in public and in your homes, urging both Jews and Greeks to turn to God and to believe in our Lord Jesus. And now you see me a prisoner already in spirit. I am on my way to Jerusalem, but have no idea what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit in town after town has made it clear enough that imprisonment and persecution await me. But life to me is not a thing to waste, on word, to waste words on, provided that when I finish my race, I have carried out the mission the Lord Jesus gave me, and that was to bear witness to the good news of God's grace. I now feel sure that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. And so here and now I swear that my conscience is clear as far as all of you are concerned. For I have without faltering put before you the whole of God's purpose. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. You poured down, O God, a generous rain. When your people were starved, you gave them new life. It was there that your people found a home, prepared in your goodness, O God, for the poor. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God. May the Lord be blessed day after day. He bears our burdens, God our Saviour. This God of ours is a God who saves. The Lord our God holds the keys of death. Kingdoms of the earth sing to God.
And says the Lord, I go, but I will come back to you, and your hearts will be full of joy. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pray to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you have given him, let him give eternal life to all those you have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth and finished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me with the glory I had with you before ever the world was. I have made your name known to the men you took from the world to give me. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now at last they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you. For I have given them the teaching you gave to me. And they have truly accepted this, that I came from you and have believed it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and in them I am glorified. I'm not in the world any longer, but they're in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The life to me is not a thing to waste words on, provided that when I finish my race, I have carried out the mission the Lord Jesus gave me. And that was to bear witness to the good news of God's grace. In that first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Paul declares that his only intention his only desire in life is to fulfill the plan that God has for him. To live out in his life, as he puts it at the end of today's reading, the whole of God's purpose. And clearly, in his own mind, Paul doesn't necessarily know exactly what that purpose looks like. There is He says, a great deal of trust. I'm on my way to Jerusalem, he says, but have no idea what will happen to me. In fact, the only thing that Paul is certain of in terms of his living out God's purpose is that it will involve imprisonment and persecution. But still, despite not knowing every single detail, And still knowing that imprisonment and persecution await him, Paul presses on. Presses on to undertake what he believes to be God's purpose for his life. We can spend a lot of time planning out the lives ahead. We can spend a lot of time focusing on this or that. But how often do we stop to ask ourselves clearly and honestly what is God's purpose 
for my life. Not what do I want to do with my life, not what do I want to get out of my life, not what are my aims, goals and targets. But what is God's purpose for me? What is it that he has called me to do? What is it, if you like, that I would like to be remembered for? Is it being remembered as a, as a great success in terms of business? Or is it to be remembered as a person who sought out the will of God and who shaped his or her life according to the Lord's command and the Lord's summons? That's what Paul did in his life. It's what St. Philip Neri did in his life too. Shape his life. All that he did according to what he understood to be the Lord's call and the Lord's purpose in his life. So as we reflect today on the scriptures, let's ask for that understanding. Lord, what is the purpose that you have for me? What is it that you call to me, call me to do? How am I to live out my life? No matter where I am in life, whether I'm at the beginning, in the middle, or nearer to the end, how today do you call me to live? So let's spend a few moments in prayer, bringing before the Lord our cares and concerns, our prayers for the church and for the world, for the sick and the suffering, for those who have gone before us in faith, our prayers for those who care for the sick, our prayers for those who put themselves at risk for the well-being of others. And we pray especially today for those discerning the Lord's purpose for their lives. And we ask people to have that generosity, that openness to serve the Lord in the priesthood and in the religious life. And so we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire our nation and those whom we name in our hearts to find freedom from fear through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. May your kingdom come, your will be done. In the name of Christ our Saviour. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and the service of our neighbour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Philip you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, with St. Philip and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. A 
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. this mingling with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. And so we pray our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that in imitation of St. Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we continue our novena to the Holy Spirit on this day five, as we pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, before ascending to your Father, you promised to send the Holy Spirit to your disciples. We ask you now to send your Holy Spirit upon our parish and give us the spirit of wisdom that we may discern the way forward, the spirit of piety that we may love you with true devotion, the spirit of courage that we may witness to you come what may, the spirit of knowledge that we may know you in friendship and love, the spirit of understanding that our minds will be enlightened by truth, the spirit of counsel, that we may choose the right path to follow, the spirit of awe and wonder, that we may be filled with loving reverence for you. Spirit of the living God, grant us today the gift of understanding, so that we may work together to make our parish ever more missionary. Come, Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Just to wish you uh, a very pleasant day ahead. Uh, keep safe, stay well, keep distanced. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.